Good morning, church. I am continuing my devotional series entitled God Over Things, and I want to pick up where I left off yesterday, speaking on contentment. 1 Timothy 6.6 6 says, Godliness and contentment is great gain. What is contentment? Simply put, it is being satisfied. But I'll have you to know that contentment is a quote-unquote bad word in certain quarters. Yes, there are many persons in our society who see contentment as a synonym for laziness and lack of ambition. They have a drive that believes that one should never be contented with what you have, but the real aspiration in life is to always achieve and never rest until you get the best. What then is the truth? I'm saying to you that that particular worldview not only exists in the world among non-believers, but that worldview also exists in the church. Yes, on one hand, there are the conservative, more traditional believers who see godliness and contentment as great gain and they interpret contentment as the true sign of spiritual maturity and godliness where you are contented and satisfied with what you have to the point where you do not look for anything more. On the other hand, there are the more, there are the more modern believers who believe that God wants you to have the best, the fat of the land, blessings, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So they see the blessings of the Lord as a true sign of spiritual maturity and God's favor upon one life and the mark of being in favor with God and anointed by God. Well, who then is correct? I'll tell you the honest truth. In my opinion, they are both wrong. Well, the conservative believers are 90% correct in that contentment is satisfaction. But the part about not wanting better, that is where the error occurs. There is nothing wrong with desiring better. In fact, God wants us to have the fat of the land. God gives us all good things to enjoy. And God wants his children to enjoy his blessings. On the other hand, the modern believers believe that they should have the best and they should get it by pursuing the best and that is where they are wrong yes god wants us to have the best but the thing is the, the way in which we get those things should not be chasing after things let me alleviate your confusion the real answer to this enigma lies in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you you see yes God wants us to have good things but God does not want us to achieve things by pursuing things but God wants us to achieve or gain things by pursuing God priority is the key we ought to seek God first in other words, God must be our priority. In other words, we must put emphasis on seeking or pursuing hard after God. And then God promises that in return, He will take it upon Himself as His responsibility to add these things unto us. In other words, we ought to chase after God. And if we do, then things will chase after us. Not the other way around. I am persuaded when you chase after things, things will run away from you. But if you chase after God, it means that money will pursue you. My definition of contentment is that you are appreciative and satisfied with what you have whilst you are believing God for, for better or for more. I am saying to all my fellow brothers in Christ, the word of the Lord is simple and it's clear. We ought to seek God first. And God is not a man to lie. He doesn't make a promise he cannot keep. Let us seek him first and then trust him to supply all our needs just as he promised he would. In the meantime, based on what we spoke last night, I want to encourage the family of God to pursue your daily Bible devotional. Read John chapters 1 to 4, 4 chapters today, 
And in the meantime, let me pray for you that you remain contented whilst trusting God to add his intended blessings to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit your people into your hands. I pray, God, that you will give them an attitude of gratitude, that no man would be begrudging, O oh God, and complaining about his status. But, O oh God, let us recognize the good things that you have done for us, to focus on those things and be grateful and thankful. Let us be, O oh God, appreciative of what we have whilst we are patiently waiting and trusting you to bless us with better and more in the name of Jesus Christ. So I pray, God, that you will give patience and faith to your children and give us the right priorities that we will seek you first and trust you to add the things unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you, church.